Thanks, Thank Ali and the board for the place to host the forum. We're also just going to have to cut the board plenty of management for a number of years. More importantly, from my perspective, and from our current perspective, she has been a real advocate for housing issues, for development issues, and her role as a colony appropriation committee. And if you look at recent history of appropriations, you can see that actually the HUD funding has come as long better than any other department compared to any of the others except for defense, for obvious reasons. Uh, I was asked to talk about a recovery to survive and to be better in today's environment. And what is today's environment? It's, it's pretty obvious that it's very competitive. There are more agencies competing for fewer dollars than we've seen in a long, long time. And it is also a very accountable environment. Because it is so competitive, agencies are expected to perform, to be accountable for the dollars they receive, to spend, spend them appropriately, to spend them in a timely fashion, but also to be able to produce very visible and measurable outcomes for the money they receive and for the programs that they implement. <laughs> so in that environment, what, if, what would be the advice I would give you as funding agencies from a federal funding perspective? There are a number of things that I'd like to hit on. The first thing would be that you need to be able to clearly articulate what it is you do. That you need to put into proposals, into funding applications, a clear message of who you are, what you do, with whom, to what end. And be able to put it in packages that will be a message that federal funders and private investors, foundations, will be willing to invest in who you are and what it is you do. Now there's a number of ways that you can do that. Right now there's a number of grant writing courses that are available through the federal agencies. And actually, uh, Marilyn, you got on our staff, she's in the front, Marilyn, I think, stands in a few more. She actually does grant writing training for our agency. Uh, and the number of places we've done here in Connecticut, went in, in Middletown recently, she's actually going to be in Massachusetts and Providence in the next couple of weeks. But we do two day courses that go in great detail on what you need to do to prepare applications to get funded. There are also other other relations similar types of funding um, uh, presentations to teach you how to do that. There's also an advice director by foundations proposal development courses that do similar things to, to help you get your packages together so that they can be winning proposals. The second thing that I think is important in trying to compete better is to build your capacity. And I know there's a whole session on this, but I just wanted to briefly on a couple of things. When people look at capacity in reviewing applications, first of all, we look on what is your history? What success have you had in the past? And it's important to be able to demonstrate that and to put that forward in your applications. The second thing in capacity is to make sure that you have staff with the expertise needed and that they're equipped with the tools to compete and to implement your projects in today's environment. What do they need as far as equipment? Today, they've got the computers. Applications are made by computer through e-grants. All, all federal applications are now going through the computer. So you've got to be computerized in your ability to submit applications, in your ability to draw down federal funds, in your ability to make fiscal reports, and your ability to track outcomes and to report those as part of your program reports. So you've got to have a place of computer systems and a staff with that computer expertise so that they can in fact not only make applications but implement those programs. Another thing that I recommend to nonprofits is that your staff be trained on project management. Being good project managers doesn't come naturally. And especially in this day and age, with computers and deadlines and outcome measures, they've got to have good project management skills. They've got to be able to hit the ground running 
to implement programs in a timely fashion to make sure they meet deadlines and that the outcomes are accomplished. There's a number of project management courses available, both in, on the federal side and in the private sector, so they need to look for those opportunities to cover their capacity. The third thing is you need funding. And more and more in today's world, you cannot go to one source of funding and expect that through your lifeline forever. Everyone expects you to leverage the dollars you get from whatever source you're getting it from. And so you need to be able to go to multiple avenues for your funding source and to be able to leverage what you get by demonstrating partnerships or demonstrating multiple funding sources with other agencies. So not only do you need to be able to go to multiple points and make successful funding your requests, but you've got to be able to partner with agencies to show that you're not staying alone what you're trying to accomplish. If you're building supportive housing, then you partner with an agency that can provide supportive services to make that work. So you need to do both things. You've got to look for multiple funding sources, but you've also got to be able to leverage with agencies the services that are needed to complement what you're trying to do. The other thing you need to do in this competitive world is resources get tighter is you may want to broaden your client base. Maybe you just did housing counseling and it was only to get first time home buyers in the door. Well, as you know, housing counseling is the broadest client base now to deal with people that are in drug addiction, to deal with people that are credit. So what is your client base? And by broadening your client base a little bit, you may be able to open the door to additional funding sources. I want to warn you, as you broaden that client base, don't take it beyond your capacity. But because we've also seen a number of entities, nonprofits that have broadened their scope to gain large pools of funding and have done it so quickly that they've gone beyond their capacity and then they've altered and have lost money in the process. So make sure that it's within your capacity to expand and that you're doing it in a way that you can take on additional avenues of funding by providing that client base, but you're not putting yourself at risk in the process. And the last thing that is really important in today's world is performance outcome measures. People are only willing to invest in the, the dollar into agencies in this tight market if they know there's going to be a measurable outcome, that they know they're going to see something come online. I was at an event Saturday, um, Habitat for Humanity in a National Forest, where there were 437 homes built last week in five days across this nation. And in New Britain, was one of those sites. And in five days, six homes came online. Down. That was new homes for six families. It was amazing to watch what happened. And the outcomes were obvious. We had results, we had some standards. But also behind the scenes were a number of other measures. You had six families that put in 150 hours each in sweat and equity. They had completed training and qualifications to actually get into the homes. They knew they had learned to manage the money, they had learned to maintain properties, they had done a number of things to become eligible. But in one week's time, those outcome measures were pretty obvious. Sometimes you need to make those outcome measures visible. 